Okay, so nice to have you. Hope you all can hear. Um, so let's get started in child's pose. This is your 45 minute Thursday morning dynamic flow. We're gonna move and get energized. Okay, so come to child's pose at the back of your mat. Big toes to touch, knees wide. And take a moment to let your body soften. Soften the face, relax the jaw. Maybe even have a little bit of a roll of the forehead. So you start to waken up through the mind's eye, just giving it a really gentle massage. And we take this first few moments just to check in, check in with the physical body, noticing if there's any tension anywhere. And then check in with all those other layers. Like it's not just the physical body, it's the mental body, the emotional body, the energetic body, spiritual body. In yoga, we call them the koshas, like all these different sheets, all these different layers of ourselves. And we're not just one, we're all of them. So you check in. And now walk the hands forward, tent up on the fingers and just get a big stretch through the side body. And as you take a breath in, press the hands down and forward and draw the seat bones back. Clear the breath out. And then one more breath in, just like that. Really deep, full breath. Open the mouth and exhale. And come up to your tabletop position. So stack shoulders over wrists, hips over knees, and take a few cat cows. Inhale, drop the belly, look up. Exhale, roll the spine, press the mat away. Inhale, drop the belly, tailbone lifts. Exhale, round the spine, navel draws in. Inhale. Then exhale. And then come back to that neutral spine and just have a moment getting your foundation solid. So using your pointer fingers parallel to each other, spread all the fingers out from there, spiral biceps back, triceps forward, lower belly hugs in. And now reach the left arm forward, right leg back. Press through the right heel, reach through the left fingertips and Suck that lower belly in. It's like hugging all the energy into the center line of the body. As you exhale, draw knee to nose. Squeeze it into the center line of your body. And then expand outwards. Draw in. Hug it in. Press back. Expand forward. And then one more time. Pull it in. Elbow to knee. Squeeze, 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 press back, expand, and then lower, left hand down, right leg back, and we'll switch sides. So right arm reaches forward, left foot pressing back, yeah, and you take that first moment just to align. So pull lower belly in, spread fingers out, left toes pointing down, and then as you inhale, reach. Exhale, draw knee to elbow. Stretch forward, kick back. Exhale, draw it in. Expand. Pull it into the center line, hug, squeeze, tight little ball. And then reach forward, kick back one more time and lower the hand and the foot down to the mat. Find your foundations, tuck the toes downward facing dog. 
Yeah, and first down dog of the day for most of us right now. So take a moment just to pedal into your feet. And maybe take it a little bit slower today, pedaling into the one side, bending the knee, and then bending into the other side. I find when I take a little bit slower walk of my dog, I can get a little bit deeper into the outer hip and start to feel the hamstrings waking up a little bit more. Nod the head yes. Shake the head no. And then nod the head yes again. Just release all that tension through the neck. Come to stillness. And walk forward to ragdoll. Grab opposite elbow, opposite wrist, and just hang in your forward fold. Feet are hips distance. They could be as wide as the mat, even if you want a little bit more generous release through the lower back. You can have bend through the knees, you could sway, you could bounce, or you could just be still. It's like these moments of checking in with the body and doing what your body needs to start to wake it up. We would take these first few poses a little bit slower, a little bit more mindfully to transition. And release the arms, let the shoulders, the arms just dangle from the shoulders. Bring the feet together to touch and rise all the way up to standing. Big stretch up and overhead. Press down through the heels as you reach the fingers high. Hands to heart center. Shut the eyes and we'll start with one ohm. And actually now's a good time to set an intention for practice. Choose a word, choose a feeling. Maybe it's one of grace or compassion or just joy. Whatever it is, set that intention and we will start with our ohm. So breathe in. Uh, Flicker the eyes open, reach up, extended mountain, get tall. Exhale, bow forward, drop. It's like drop everything, drop thoughts, drop the vision. Inhale to a halfway lift, long spine, squeeze the thighs together, fold forward. Sweep up, stand tall, extended mountain. It's like you're reaching all the way up to the sky. Exhale, bow down. Empty the breath. Come into a halfway lift. Suck the lower belly in. Shoulder blades glide down the back. Hands to the mat. Step back to plank. And just hold this first plank. Like energize the heels. Zip up through the center line of the body. And press the crown of the head forward. Take a big inhale. And as you exhale, lower all the way down to the mat, pulling elbows in towards the side body. Untuck the toes, baby cobra. Chest comes forward. Lower the forehead to the mat. Come up into a cobra a little bit higher. Keep squeezing elbows in, lower it back down. One more time, high cobra or upward facing dog. Clear the breath out, downward facing dog. Hips up and back. Yeah, just notice. Notice even just after one sun A, how your body feels across all those different layers. How the physical body feels, how your mental body feels what's going on emotionally, what's going on energetically, and your spirit. Draw the breath in. Empty the breath out. Look forward to your hands and travel to the front of the mat. Halfway lift, long spine, tuck the chin, fold. Extended mountain sweep up, stand tall, Pull it into center line. Exhale, fold forward. 
halfway lift, high to low plank, moving through your vinyasa, knowing you can take your modifications, cobra or upward facing dog, top of the feet press down, elbows squeeze in, downward facing dog, press the hands down and forward, spread out all the fingers. It's like you're stretching through the webbing of each finger. And then your feet, you're pressing the heels down and back. Maybe they hit the mat, maybe they don't. But it's that action of the weight drawing towards the mat. Toes spread wide, webbing between each of the toes, you're stretching it out. And then there's this softness in the knees and the elbows like water through the joints, you keep that softness. Big breath in, filling up the lungs completely. And then as you empty the breath out, start to look forward to the hands, little softness in the elbows and the knees and step or jump to the front. Halfway lift, lengthen, fold. Chair pose, sit down, hug it into center line. So like take that first chair and just hold it for a second. Just notice where's your attention going and where your attention goes, your energy flows. Squeeze inner thighs, tuck the tailbone and then reach through the fingers. Take a big breath in, clear the breath out, fold. Lift half, flow low, upward facing downward facing right foot forward warrior one root down through the heels and rise up and then pause like have that first warrior one find your feet draw left hip forward right hip back and then reach the arms up strong through the feet strong through the core big breath in breath out low plank up dog, squeeze the armpits, down dog, hips back, left side warrior one, root down, rise up, and then pause, left knee pressing to the pinky toe edge of the mat so you can see your big toe, and then you're pressing the right foot towards the back of the mat, the right glute is fired up, lower belly hugs in and you reach the hands high, fingers alive, sparks up to the sky like you're plugging your fingers into sockets in the sky. Breath in, breath out, low plank. Up dog, down dog. Yeah, and then reset. Reset, and when you reset, you think about your foundations, those tools of the practice. Your drishti, that soft, subtle gaze to the back of the mat. It's like two eyes, one point. And when you look at that one point, you actually see everything. And it's that focus that keeps you centered. Look forward to the hands. Keep looking at one spot, soften the knees and float to the front. Lift half, fold chair, squeeze in, center line, bow down, halfway lift, high to low plank, upward facing, squeeze armpits, press tops of the feet down, downward facing, right side warrior one, just moving and flowing with your breath, press down, expand up, Low plank, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, left side warrior one, root down, rise up, low plank. It's like always moving with breath, might be a little bit faster, it might be a little bit slower, glide into your back bend. Press back into downward facing dog. Bring the feet together to touch at the back of the mat. Raise the right leg high up to the sky. 
Bend the knee, open up to the right. So you're stacking the hips. Hands press down and forward evenly and equally. And maybe you look under the right armpit. And then lower the right foot down. Shift forward to your high plank, side plank, left arm in the air. And you take your version of plank. That could be modified with the knee down. It could be with a leg up. Wherever you are, you do you. You always, always do you. Hug everything into the center line of your body. So it's like total body expression, total body integrity for three, for two, for one. Low plank, up dog, fire up the glutes, down dog, press back. Feet together to touch at the back of the mat. Raise the left leg, high, 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 up to the sky. Bend the knee, open up. Like feel that stretch along the left side of your body. And you're stacking, stacking hips. Mula Bandha, Uddiyana Bandha, your locks, pelvic floor lock, your core lock. Lower the left leg down, shift forward to your high plank and roll to your side plank, right arm in the air, stack feet, stack hips, stack shoulders. And then there's this softness through the left elbow. Yeah. And if you have a little wobble, like I just did, who cares? You just come back, pull it in to that imaginary center line, all the energy drawing in, in, in low plank. Up dog, down dog. Ha, ah, take a big breath in, sigh it out. Ha. Ah. Raise the right leg straight back this time. Press the heel towards the back of the space like you're standing on a wall behind you. Pull the pit of the belly in and up towards the spine. Take a big breath in, breath out knee to nose. Kick back, knee to right elbow, you shift forward, kick back, knee to left elbow, little twist, squeeze, kick back, knee to nose, and then step through, crescent lunge. So just build from your base here, press down through the right foot at 12 o'clock, and press off that left big toe mound to rise up to your crescent lunge. Yeah, and here you neutralize the pelvis. Sometimes it's a little bit easier if you bend the back knee and you find your pelvis, little tuck of the tailbone as the pelvis scoops up towards the chest. And then from there, you straighten out that back leg. Reach the arms up, hands to heart center, and we twist, left elbow, right knee always using our breath as we twist. So inhaling to create the length, exhaling to spin along the spine. Gaze shifts towards the side wall, side of your space. Keep pulling lower belly in. It's like stability. Can you notice your breath here? Come back to high lunge, warrior two, open up. Yeah, and then just maybe find a little bounce and then settle into your warrior, like strong warrior two. Flip the front palm reverse. Extended side angle, right elbow to the right knee and then the left arm spins up overhead. Keep pressing both heels straight down into the earth as you pull the energy into your core. It's like hugging the femur bones into the, into the hip sockets. Your legs are super strong. Take a big breath in here. Breath out, low plank. Upward facing. Downward facing. Raise the left leg straight back. That pretend imaginary wall behind you and your left leg is strong, strong, strong as the right heel descends down towards the mat. 
Take a big inhale. Exhale, shift forward, knee to nose. Kick it back. Knee to left elbow. Tap the tricep. Kick it back. Knee to left right elbow. Twist, squeeze, kick back. Knee to nose. Press through the hands and gently step through. Yeah, and build from your base. So you're pressing down through the big toe mounts as you rise up to crescent lunge. Neutralize the pelvis, reach the fingers high. Hands to heart center, twist. Yeah, and even here, I found I used to, tr I used to sort of try to ground down through the back heel, but the more I can lift off the back, big toe mound gives me a bit more stability. Always knowing you can drop the back knee if you need. As you inhale, you create the length and space. And as you exhale, you twist a little bit deeper. Maybe you open the arms. Come back to high lunge. Warrior two. And take your little bounce. Lubricate the joint, lubricate the knees. And then settle. And as you settle, keep dropping the hips and aiming to get that left knee at 90 degrees. Knee pressing out to the pinky toe edge so you can see the big toe. Flip the front palm, reverse warrior. Extended side angle. Press down through the feet and spread the toes out. Can you lift the toes here and ground down through all four corners of the feet? And can you notice your face? Is it soft or is it scrunched up? If it's scrunched up, it's like come back to breath, come back to drishti, and come back to a bit of softness, stability and ease in the pose called Sthira Sukha Asana, one of the sutras in the yoga sutras. Low plank, upward facing dog, squeeze your armpits, feel that back bend, downward facing dog. Look forward to your hands and jump to the front. Halfway lift, long spine, pull the belly in, fold. Chair pose, take your seat. Take your seat, shift the hips back, lift the 10 toes. So you've got the weight pressing down in the heels. Hands to heart center, twist to the right. Yeah, and these twists are so good for your detoxification, detoxification of liver, kidney, spleen. It's like twisting everything out, twisting, twisting out impurities, toxins. Take a breath in. Breath out, fold forward, separate the feet, hips distance, grab big toes with peace fingers, come into a halfway lift, create a little bit of length, and then fold. Release the head, release the neck. You can have some softness in the knees here, but I want you to use that resistance between toes and fingers to pull the crown of the head closer to earth. Nod the head, yes. Shake the head, no. Always ending on a positive, so nod the head, yes. One more time. And then we begin the other side all over. Big toes to touch, chair. Hands to heart center and twist. Right elbow, left knee. Yeah, and as you twist, have that sense of hips being weighted down. As you pull the lower belly in, you lift the chest up. So you want your heart higher than your hips. We have this tendency that the right knee will draw forward. So try to pull it back. Pull the, magnetize the right hip back. And fold. Separate the feet, come into gorilla. So place the full palm underneath your feet. And that might mean that your knees are bent. 
And then from there, fold forward. And maybe you can start straightening out the legs, but it all depends on the tightness or looseness, flexibility of your hamstrings. More important to get the hands underneath the, underneath the feet than have straight legs. And get that sense of like a little bit of awakening as you get this energy flowing into your head with your head upside down. And then release the feet, feet together to touch and rise all the way up to standing, stretch, stretch, stretch overhead. It's like you're stretching through the skin all the way up and out the fingers. Eagle on the right, right arm under, right leg over. Yeah, and you just flow into it. And with all balances, it's about your focus, it's about drishti and your breath, those foundations. Switch sides. Sweep up, extended mountain. Eagle on the left. And you just flow into the other side. It's like, who cares what you think about balancing poses? Just do it. Just be here, experiencing this moment, whether it's a wobble, whether it's perfect in your head, doesn't matter either way. Sweep up, extend the mountain. Right side eagle. It's like you're going into it again, but you're actually doing a whole new eagle, this eagle for the first time ever in this exact moment. And keep sinking down, sinking the hips down as you reach the elbows up. You get a little bit of a stretch through the shoulders. And then uncurl the right leg and come into your warrior three. Focus, drishti. Drishti is so important as we transition. Unwind the arms, airplane. And in this airplane, it's like you're lifting, taking off. So you have a little bit of a back bend as you press the heels down and away. Hands to heart center, half moon. Left arm comes down, right arm reaches up. Yeah, and this is like, you find your edge here. I always, always have a little bit of a wobble, but I get strong through my legs. The more I lift my right leg up, the more stability I have. Suck the belly in and find that focus, find your breath. Ha, ragdoll, release, shake it out. Shake it out, shake it out. Clasp the hands behind your back. Just have a little bob and ragdoll. Relax the arms down. Big toes to touch, rise all the way up. Extend upwards as you press the feet down. Eagle on the left. Press through the heel, squeeze inner thighs and squeeze the elbows. Draw all that attention, all your energy into center line. Where attention goes, energy flows. Unwrap the back leg and transition into your warrior, warrior three, and then unwrap the arms, airplane. It's like transitions are just as important as the poses. So be intentional, be intentional and be up to something bigger than yourself. Hands to heart center, half moon. Right arm down, left arm up. Press down through the right standing heel, fire up the back leg, squeeze the glutes. Find that edge. It's like, if you don't try, you never know. And maybe there's a wobble, but maybe you go beyond your edge and you find a new edge. That's amazing. Okay, release down. I had a wobble, that's fine. Who cares? Okay, shake it out. Clasp the hands behind your back. Feel that rinsing through the shoulders as you reach them over. Nod the head, yes. Shake the head, no. Nod the head, yes, one more time. And then relax the arms down. Feet together to touch halfway lift. 
hands to the mat and step back through plank, lower down, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Step right foot forward, warrior two. Spin the arms up and open. And then reverse your warrior and stay here for a moment. Just feel that stretch along the right side body, tuck the tailbone, pull the lower belly in. And from there, straighten the front leg. And now kick the hips back, come into your trikonasana, your triangle pose. Keep pressing the hips back as you reach the right arm forward, forward, forward. And when you can reach no more, then you lower the right arm down, lift the left arm up towards the sky. Press down through the heels as you tilt the pelvis up towards your chest and then open up the chest towards the sky. Hands are like antennas reaching up, left fingers reaching up. We've got so much energy in our hands actually. There are other bandhas, the locks. Okay, rise up as you press down through the feet, you rise up with the core. Turn the right foot to the side of your mat. Interlace your hands behind your back. Take an inhale to set it up and then fold forward over your legs. Bring the hands, the shoulders over. Side facing forward fold. You can make this as active as you want or passive. I'm choosing active. So I press the outer edges of my feet away from each other and that switches on the adductors, the inner thighs, the groin muscles. Soft through the toes. Revolve the seat bones up as the crown of the head reaches down towards the mat, aiming to get the crown of the head to touch the mat. It might happen, it might never happen. It really doesn't matter, but it's that intention. Bring your hands to your hips and a little softness in the knees as you press back up to standing. Turn the right foot towards the front of the mat. Step in to set up for pyramid pose. So you step about a third of the way in, left foot at 45 degree angle, hands on hips. Inhale to create length through the spine. Exhale, fold over the right leg. Aim chin to shin. And now your hands are in your hips. Take your right thumb and press it in to that little space in between your hips and press it back. It's like a self-assist. So you really wanna keep pressing the right hip back as you draw the left hip forward. Pressing down, pulling in and creating your expression of this pose. Come into a halfway lift. Hands to the mat, step back through plank, straight to down dog or through your vinyasa, your choice. Always, always, always your choice. And we'll take a nice big breath in here. Long, slow exhale. Warrior two on the left side. Flip the front palm and reverse. Keep that length, get that stretch, and then straighten the front leg, kick the hips back, trikonasana, triangle pose. And remembering that transition is just as important. So you take your time to find the length and the depth before opening up. And then take a little softness in the knees, like. Don't lock those knees out. The knees are it's like water running through the joints. So you have that softness in the knees. And from there, can you tuck the tailbone, scoop the lower belly in, and now press the heels down and away from each other. And as the heels are pressing down and away, rise all the way up to standing. Turn both feet out to the side, come down into goddess. Goddess pose. I'm gonna transition so I'm looking at you. So your heels are pressing down, toes pointing out to the sides of the mat, hands to heart center. Just have a little bounce here. So nice to open up through the hips. 
and then place your hands on the inside of the knees, inside of the thighs. As you inhale, drop the left shoulder down. Look over your right shoulder. And then over to the left, right arm, right shoulder, press, right arm pressing the right knee away and you look over the left shoulder. Come back to center, one more time each side. Softness through the feet, softness through the toes. And then final time over to the left. Yeah, and you keep dropping the hips, pulling the lower belly in here. And then come back to center, rise all the way up. Turn towards the front of the mat, big step forward, reach the arms up and overhead. Exhale, fold. Lift half. High to low plank, final vinyasa, up dog, little back bend, downward facing dog. Raise the right leg, maybe have a little rotation through the hip. And then we'll set up for half pigeon on the right, glide the right knee to the right wrist, right foot towards the left wrist. Take a moment to set up for your half pigeon. So maybe you need a prop, a block underneath the hip. Inhale to create length and then exhale, fold forward. Maybe you come to the forearms, maybe you come all the way down. And then soften. It's like we've done a, start, a pretty powerful flow and then you get to this point, it's like, oh, okay. Remind yourself to release. So soften to the face. Unlock the jaw. Release any tension in the belly or in the abdomen or in the glutes. Just have a few breaths, fully focusing on letting go. We so often keep everything so tight to us, whether it's our physical body or it's emotions or whatever else, but we like keep it in. Sometimes it's good to just let it go. And then make your way to the other side. That could be through downward facing dog or just swing the other leg around. And take your time to set up. It's like that transition that we talked about, being intentional even about the transition and the setup. How you do one thing is how you do everything. And set it up and then crawl the hands forward and settle into your half pigeon. Shut the eyes, turn the drishti inward for a few moments and keep that ujjayi breath going and let the ujjayi breath be louder than any thoughts that are coming in. But as we come to a slower part of the practice or to a pose that we just hold a little bit longer, thoughts are so often like it's the time that they drift in. And if you let your breath be the focus, then you can drop those thoughts. Make your way up to a seated position. Swing the back leg around, both legs reaching forward. Seated forward fold. Press the seat bones down, reach the arms up. Create a bit of length here. So keep pressing seat bones down as you pull lower belly in. And with all that length, reach forward, hinging from the hips, reach, reach, reach. And then fold over the legs, relax the neck. And you could use your hands to Pull your chest towards your feet, 
or you could have it a little bit more active in the core by having your hands out to the side. As you inhale, reach the chest forward, crown of head towards the toes. And then exhale, go a little bit deeper into the fold. One more time, heart forward, create length, create space, and then deepen as you exhale. Rise back up to seated and lower yourself all the way down towards the mat. Draw the right knee in, supine twist. Take an inhale to set it up and then twist over to the left, bottom hip and gaze to the right. And soften here, soften drishti, soften glutes, soften belly. And it's in that softness that you get a bit more space, a bit more access. Switch sides. Left knee draws in, right leg goes long. Take a breath in to set it up. And then twist. Final bit of detox here for you. Come back to center, draw both knees in towards your chest. Ground the sacrum, squeeze the knees. Final breath, all together. Deep, deep, deep breath, filling the lungs, breathing all the way up to the crown of the head. And try to take in a tiny bit more air and then open the mouth, exhale, Shavasana. Set up for your final resting pose. Palms on either side of the body, facing up, ready to receive. Feet on either side of the mat. And then drop your ujjayi breath. Let the body just breathe naturally. Shut the eyes and have a few moments of stillness to let the practice do its work. And if you have time in your day, it's always good to extend any Shavasana for as long as you can. Otherwise, begin to notice the air on your skin. Begin to notice the breath, starting to deepen the breath. Wiggle toes, wiggle fingers, invite that little bit of movement back in. Take a big, full body stretch from tips of the fingers, tips of the toes. And then draw knees in towards your chest and gently make your way over to one side, transitioning up to a seated position, keeping your eyes closed, ground through the seat bones and draw up through the crown of the head. And just take a moment to notice how you feel right now. Doing that scan of the body, physical body, mental body, emotional body, energetic body, and your spirit. Noticing if there's been any shift. Bring your hands to heart center and Anjali Mudra. 
acknowledge yourself for the practice and just come back to your intention, whatever it was, and let that carry with you through the rest of the day. And we'll seal it in with one final ohm. Breathe in. Uh, um, thumbs to forehead center, your mind's eye, spot of intuition, and all knowing. The divine in me honors the divine in you. Together we bow and say namaste. Great job. Thank you, Gret. That was great.